we're gatekeepers of the home and the nation. Relentless in prayer and intercession. The MD of Mobile's Fashion. Can you help me appreciate that? Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. Also, I want to appreciate Mrs. Yetunde Oni. Can you help me appreciate Mrs. Yetunde Oni? Hallelujah. And of course, we have a master of ceremony in the house. Welcome, Ayomairo Ese. Thank you so much. Good morning, women of God. Good morning, daughters of destiny. We give God glory for today. Indeed, this is the day that he has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to first of all celebrate our mama in the house, Apostle Busola Jagede. Thank you so much, ma. <laughs> you know, Apostle Busola is a fashionista. She's a woman on fire who is also a fashionista. But today I saw her in a different light. I had to almost wash my face. Huh? Is it the same? Am I lying? Is she not looking like what, 10 years or 15 years or 20 years younger? Can we celebrate Jesus in her life? <laughs> Thank you so much, Ma. God bless you. You look resplendent. So happy birthday in arrears again. We celebrate you. God bless you mightily. Yes, you can celebrate, please. <laughs> celebrate the gift of God. Thank you very much, Ma. Now it's time to celebrate yourselves. I mean, I see beautiful women in front of me. I thank God for your lives. If this is how you celebrate yourself, there's a problem. <laughs> Aha, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I always say this in, you know, women gatherings, where women are gathered, that sometimes as women, we don't celebrate ourselves enough. We're so many things in one. We are mothers, we are spouses, we are daughters, we are granddaughters in some instances, we are bosses, we are employees, and we are carrying all this on our shoulder at once, juggling so many things and doing it so gracefully. And we, all, we, we are all also the main cheerleaders, cheerleaders of our children, cheerleaders of the husband, cheerleaders in so many areas. But when it comes to cheerleading ourselves, we neglect to do that. You don't remember to because you're so busy doing so many, many, many. And don't forget prayer warrior. You know, so many things you're doing. So at times like this, when we gather together, it's not pride. It's not self-worship. It's just sometimes thanking God for the strength and the grace he has given you to be a woman. So please celebrate Jesus for your life. That's right. That's how it is. That's how you celebrate. Amen. Yes. Thank God for your life. Thank God. If nobody told you you were looking good, look at yourself and say, I tried. I tried. Uh -uh. Don't be angry. If you did not see the new hairstyle, look at the new round. Uh -uh. This hair is fine. These shoes are nice. Don't wait. So sometimes, you know, celebrate yourself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. It's not canal. The God that we made is a good God. He's a beautiful God. The Bible says he saw all that he did and he thought he was good. So God celebrated himself. He saw it and he thought to himself, this is good. I tried. So when you see something, when you make some soups, you put it in your mouth. Ah, this is good. And you know that you are made in the likeness and the image of your father in heaven. You are not far from him. Hallelujah. Are we excited for this morning? What we're about to experience. So it's my pleasure to introduce another fashionista. <laughs> She's going to be speaking to us for the next few minutes. She is, as Apostle has mentioned, and I, I will read her full bio. But she is, uh, I know her in another capacity. We attend the same church. And she's a woman. When you see her, let me tell you my first encounter, then I'll read my, the formal bio. When you see her, you think, uh, you know, this woman I like fashion. You, there's no, you know, she's fashion, prayer. Maybe her prayer will be like, in Jesus' name, God bless you. The Lord will honor you. Oh, Lord, just, you know, give God. The day she led prayers, and I was there for the first time, I was like, you know, you just like take a second look like, my goodness. There's a saying that don't be fooled by my heels. I am a warrior in heels. Don't be fooled by my makeup. I know how to slay. I'm not just a face slayer. I know how to slay demons and devils. Hallelujah. So I really thank God that, you know, we have such great mentors, people that we can look up to who are fashionable, look after themselves. But when it comes to time of prayer and time to engage in warfare, they are very solid to the glory of God. And so I'd like to introduce our first speaker for this morning, who was born over four decades ago to the Christian family of Chief and Mrs. Ao o Afilaka of Ijesha Extraction. She is a graduate, Bachelor of Arts Education in Economics from the Amadou Bello University in Zaria. She's an alumna of the prestigious CEIBS, IESC, and Harvard Business School. 
She's a devoted Christian and a minister at this present house church in Lagos. Her faith in God gives her the belief that no obstacle is insurmountable. A vibrant, energetic woman, she has a huge heart and grows full of more life and verve with each passing day. Her faith, persistence, and sense of style have played an important role in her success in the fashion retail business. Her company, Mobos Fashion, an omni-channel fashion retail business, started small and now has four stores in strategic and highball locations in Lagos, Nigeria. They have won several awards, including the Outstanding Boutique of the Year Award and the Award of Celebrating Change, amongst others. She is married to a successful lawyer, Mr. Gbenga. I don't want to say the surname yet, so you will know the person I'm talking about. They reside in Lagos, Nigeria, with their two wonderful and handsome sons, daughters of destiny, to the glory of God. Can we make very welcome our first speaker, Mrs. Omobowale Irene Biobaku. Oh my God, very funny. Oh, what she read? I shall leave that. This is me. <laughs> All that is just, uh, they said we must have a profile. But this is me. And me that I'm nothing without him. So that's it. So know that I am nothing without him. Everything I am is because of him. When we prayed this morning, there was a word I got. And I, I think it's in John 15. And I, let me go there so that I, I have to share it with you briefly. Just that word so that you guys will know that it's really not about me or about you. So I think it's John 15. Did I even write it down? I think it's John 15. Five. Let me see if I'm sure. Yeah. John 15, 5. I am the sprouting vine. And you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. So that just says that without God, we're nothing. So we are, is the vine, we are the branches. And without him, we can do nothing. So I've been asked this morning to speak on entrepreneurial. It's an entrepreneurial talk and scaling up your business in Nigeria and globally. So when people think of scaling up, what, what comes to mind? Let's make this interactive. That's the best way to learn. What do you think when you think about, is it okay to move around? So I'm more comfortable. I want to be free. So when you think about scaling, what do you think about? Next level. Rising, upgrading, fantastic. Thank you, expansion. So, fantastic. These people are too deep for me. I thought they were going to say, you know, when people think of scaling up, they think money. When you want, okay, maybe I didn't ask properly. If you want to scale up your business, what do you think about? Sorry? Ah, people are deep. Oh. Ideas. Ah, Pastor Busola, let me drop it. <laughs> you know what they say? I drop it. So what am I doing here? These people are deep. And you sat down there not encouraging yourself. Ah. <laughs> when some people think about scaling up their businesses, what comes to mind is funding. Am I lying? But when you want to scale up your business, People, the people that think just funding, get into trouble. So I was saying to someone when I was away, and um, that if somebody comes now to invest in my business, they have a huge sum to invest in my business, what will I do? And I said to the person that I will not take it. And she was taken aback. That what do you mean you will not take it? I said, more than the money. I need more from the person, from the investor. It's not only about money. So a lot of people think it's just funding, 
and they take it and get into trouble. Because you need more than funding to take your business to the next level. Am I making sense? So I wrote down something here about scaling up a business. And it goes, scaling a business means setting the stage to enable and support growth in your business. The Bible says, the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. That is growth. We can never remain stagnant. There is always a next level. And no matter what you're doing, make sure you're moving, Sha. Don't stay at it. You can't even stand at a point. Is it that you're growing or you are exactly moving forward or moving back, backwards? What are you doing? You have to keep moving. No matter the steps you're taking, so really, I really don't have a long note written down. I'm really going to talk to you from my heart. So scaling a business means setting the stage to enable and support growth in your company. It means having the ability to grow without being hampered. So we agree that at some point in our businesses, we can get stuck. Not only in business, in life generally. You can get to the point where you're stuck and you don't even know what to do. You don't know where to turn to. You don't know where to get help from. You just notice that there's, you're stagnant. Nothing is changing. It's like the same old, same old. I've been there. I've been there. And that's why every time when I go through a tunnel, I always record it. I, I was actually thinking I'll bring out one of my videos for them to show. I always record it when I'm in a tunnel. And I'm talking to myself. And people are there wondering. I'm... Like, mm, this is eternal, eternal of life, eternal of your business, eternal of your marriage. And we're driving, and you seem not to know where it's going to end. You never know how long the tunnel is, except you've been in the tunnel. But if you've never been in the tunnel, and you keep going, and you're wondering, I'm tired, I need more money, I don't know what to do, I need staffing. I don't know the step to take. I don't know who to turn to, but you keep going. You know, at that point in that tunnel, if you stop, what happens? You will be in darkness. You will not see the light. But if you keep going, and that is always what happens, if you keep going without giving up, without stopping, what happens at the end of it? You see the light. So the people that don't see the light are the people that give up. If only we would just still press on, press on just a little bit more, and then we get there. That business, instead of just saying, you know what, I'm tired, it's not working. I say to people, have you tried everything? Some people say, I've tried everything, nothing is working. It's a lie. Be honest with yourself. Have you tried everything? You will try everything. Everything triable. You will go to school. Go back to school. You will go and learn. You will look for someone that's done it before. Ask questions. How did you do it? Some things that we're struggling with. I was complaining about something in my office, for example. And a friend of mine came to see me. It's good to be surrounded by godly people and spiritual people. So she just came to gist with me and we're just, oh, mom, it's been a long time. We're gisting with you. And she just said one word. I mean, just a word. It was as if a scale just dropped. What I had been struggling with, the scale just dropped that, oh, my God. This is what, this is the step I'm meant to take. So make sure you are connected to the right people. When I say that, I'm not saying connection. Because some people say I don't have connection. It's not that kind of connection I'm talking about. When you are connected to God, remember what we just said. is divine. We are the branches. And with him, we can do all things. But make sure you are surrounded with the right people. Make sure you have people you can ask questions. People you can talk to. Did we get that point? How many of you have your own businesses here? 
fantastic. Not only is that roof up, the whole building, I can already see it. Because the last time I was there, there was no roof. Abby. Was there a roof? So we're not covered at the... Ah, hallelujah. And then I saw the roof today. Did you see my excitement? Say, Jesus. So it means that whatever... You know what, I, what the Holy Spirit was saying to me when I saw the roof? That, ah, whatever I tell you to do, take that step. Because you don't know the end from the beginning. The only one that knows the end from the beginning is the Alpha, the Omega. The Alpha, Omega. He does not wait for you to start to end. He knows the end before you start. So he says, start this. And I'm sure when you started, you didn't even think of a building, not to talk of a roof. And now that structure is up. Do you now not believe the God that says he's faithful to complete all things? Whatever he has started is faithful. So I, he spoke to me sitting down right there. So whatever business, even if you don't own your own business, whatever business you want to start, whatever the Lord has laid on your heart, and don't wait for that audible voice so, and be waiting, 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 and not do anything. Whatever you desire, as long as you're spiritual people and you connect to God, whatever you sense that the Lord is telling you to do, make that move and it will back you up. Amen? Okay. So I went to Yesse this year. And, no, not Yesse. Where did I meet him? Yes, I met him in Yesse. I didn't meet him at Sibs. I think I met him in Yesse. The founder and um, president of Sibs. Sibs stands for China Europe International Business School. And he said one thing that stuck with me. He said, for your business to be good, that, you know, he says, a good business is global. A good business is global. And I was thinking, then he now said something else. He said, to be global, you need just two things. You guys, I'm sure you are looking for that, something to write. I will drop it. Because the same way he said that. Uh, two things. He said humility and respect. When he said it, I said, Jesus, this guy has preached the word. Humility is the path to glory. I said, oh, wow. Humility and respect. And the truth is, I always teach my children. I tell them, be humble. It will endear people to you. It will open doors for you. When you go somewhere and you need people to collaborate with, if you go like on your high horse, they can look at you and say, you know she? But if you go, that even says we should be meek. If you just go, make your presentation, honor them, and see what God will do. So the guy was able to open Sibs. I think he was the one that, yes, he's the founder. So he was able to start it in Europe, in China, in Spain. And he said, those are the two things that you need. And Sibs, by the way, I think is number five in the world. And no, Professor Nueno Pedro is the founder. And those are the two things that we require. But going back to our businesses, because it's about scaling up and being global. So take those two things and keep it. But going back to our businesses, we want to scale up. But how is your business? We all want to scale up. You guys have said it, expansion, new level. So what do you do to go to the new level you want to attain? Is it just money like I said? Absolutely no. Do you have a proper structure in place for your business? What business? I don't care what you're doing. No matter the kind of business, even if you are selling pure water, do you have a structure in place for growth? Because we have said as Christians and we are connected to what? The source. We are connected to the vine. And our path 
because we are lovers of God, we do what? Shine brighter and brighter and brighter onto the perfect sea. So there's no excuse about that. No two way. We are for growth. We are for increase. Abi, we are for prosperity. But what do you have the proper structure in place? Do you have the capacity and the capabilities you need to grow your business? So, Pastor Pisola says, visualize what you want to be. Visualize your life, your marriage, your business, your home. Visualize it. Because as you, can, as you see, so will you, so will it be. As far as your eyes can see. So you are here today. You think you are selling pure water. But that pure water, where do you think is going to? What plans do you have for that business? Because that's where you are going. And you need to plan for that place that you have seen. Do you get my point? You are not planning just for where you are. Because if you are faithful in little, God will give you much. So you need to plan for that growth that you visualize, that place that you want to arrive at. You need to put plans in place for, for that place. So, scaling requires planning. It requires funding, but not only funding. It requires the right systems. It requires the right people. We need people, 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 very important. It requires the right processes. It requires, in this day and age, technology. And it requires you to also have partners, people that you, have, you can collaborate with. Right systems, funding, planning, staff, Processes, technology, and partners or people you can collaborate with. So, I started my business almost two decades ago. And I started it. At home. I always say I started it at home, but at some point I used to go and give to people in their offices. But I always say I started from the from my home. I think I started from my home when I got married. And today we have four stores across Lagos. Of course, we've opened more than that. That's part of putting your plans in place before you start doing trial and error. I've done trial and error. I'll just say, let me go, Jerry. Then I will invest a lot of money in them. I don't waste time. And if it's not working, I quickly count my losses and I move on. That's what I do. But that's not the way because it says you hear a voice behind you telling you which way to go. And we have the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us. So I've moved from that trial and error. I don't do that again. I wait. Lord, please, what do you want me to do? So I'll tell you a bit. Though I started my business in my home, and as at the time I wanted to open my first door, I started praying to God. That's why I said to you that all those things, she went to Harvard, she went to USA, it's not the one doing it. It is God. Let us say it. I always tell people, it is God. You start it in the spirit, and then you see it in the physical. If you don't see it in the spirit, the thing you see in this physical will not last. It will crash. But when you see it there and you now establish it or you see the manifestation, you will know that this is not me. It is God. And we are building on a solid foundation when you start in the spirit. So that was how I started my business. So I started praying to God that I needed a store. And I would drive up and down Awulawa Road praying for a place to open up. Because people will tell you different things, but don't believe. Don't use other people's bad experiences to judge what's going to happen to you. No. You learn from their bad experiences so that you won't make that same mistake. They said there's no road, no space on Awolowo Road. Ah, 
at that point, no space on Naulo Road. I could just say no space on Naulo Road. Let me sit down. What am I going to do? I had children. Oh, yeah, I had both women. Yeah, I'd given birth to Angela. I had a child. And I thought, no space. I want to be there for this boy. If I now go and look for one far place, how will I deal with it? So I just kept praying, and I'll drive from beginning to the end. And I got a word that it will make room for me, real bot. And I held on to that word. So that's part of scaling up. Have a word to hold on to. I have another word. When she was praying, that eh, visualized. Ah, I visualized it. I saw it. I said, Lord, the word that you have said to me, you will bring it to pass. I see where I'm going. I see where you are taking my business to. And I call it forth in the name of Jesus. That was how I started calling forth from Awulawa Road from beginning to the end. Maybe some people will say, are you mad? What are you looking for? I just parked in front of one day. I said, Lord, I receive it in the name of Jesus. When I saw that it was, uh, no, I got word that the person was going to move out. It was in this place. I said, okay, no problem. Then I traveled to Paris with my husband. Guess where I met the lady that left where she was for me? That do not. In Paris. Train station. In Paris. I came to Nigeria. I didn't even think anything of it. Then she came to my house in Nigeria. And she said, you can have the stuff. I said, really? She said, yes. Then I went to meet the woman. The woman said, no, I even want to give the whole building to one person. Me, that I'm just starting. How? I said, no, I can't. I only just want that small space. And I traveled to have my second baby. I came back. I had my baby October. I came to Nigeria. It was as if something was biting me in the America. November. I was praying for the passport. The day the passport came out, before one month, I said, I'm coming. My husband said, please, just wait for one month, just four weeks for the baby. I said, there's nothing. The baby is strong. I came to Nigeria. One month exactly. As soon as I came back, guess who had been looking for me? The woman. She said, just take it. Just take it. Just take it. Ah, the old building. Mm -mm, just take what you want. I said, glory. So I took it. And that was where we started. But I started at home with $1,000. Then $1,000 was 120000 naira. So we moved there. And we started doing business there. And then from there, we moved to the next store. We still kept it, the two for a bit. And then we moved to the third one. We gave out that one to someone else. Somebody came to look for me. It is good to always take this life spiritually. Let us not think it is what we see. It is not what we see. It is not. It is deeper than that. I sat down in my store. Because I am connected to the vine and I am a branch, I have to bring forth fruit. fruit. I sat in my shop. They came to meet me, to call me to come to the palms. I said, I can't afford it. I don't even want. She said, no. What do you want? Guess what? On my terms. So you need to trust God for what you want. With hindsight, maybe I should have trusted God that that whole building is safe. I will take it. But my faith, I say, eh? Hey, Joe, this small place is all right. But when that time came, I came to beg me. I said, I should come and take it. I said, all this payment, I can't pay this. I will pay this. I can't pay one year. I wouldn't. They agreed to everything. So we believe God because we even call forth. We belong to that tribe that does not walk by sight, but by faith. So that's one testimony for you. That's not the main gist. So did you write down what I said? Because people like this, the way you're looking at me, like, hey, no, talk. ah, it's sweet, oh. Let's finish this thing. So let's write five steps we need to scale our business. We need to evaluate and plan. Evaluate your business. At what, where, where is your business right now? What point is your business? Take a hard look at your business and see if you're ready for growth. Because it's not all businesses that are ready for growth, whether we like it or not. Not all businesses. So you have to check. You must know exactly what your business is. 
where your business is, your customers, where are your customers coming from, who are they, you know, evaluate the everything and then plan it. Strategize what you need to do to increase your business. If you're selling, if you're selling product, you need to have a strategy for growth. What do you need to increase your sales? You need to know all that. That's part of evaluation and planning. If you need to, if you want to sell like 100 products, how many do you need? You won't say you want to sell 100 products and you have 50. You know you have to double your production, double your orders. So you must have a strategy. So if you're saying you want to buy Christmas, how much do you want to make for Christmas? Do you have a budget? Do you have a budget for your Christmas sales? Do you have a budget for, if, you, if you're doing services, for example, you're rendering services, do you have a plan? What do you want to make for Christmas? Because if you don't have that, then you can't plan accordingly. But if you have those figures in place, or you have a plan that this is, what I, this is where I'm going, if you don't know where you're going, you will not go anywhere. That's it. If you don't know where you're going. That's why the Bible says, write the vision down, make it plain. So that you yourself, you will be able to run with it. And then the other people you are bringing on board, they will be able to run with it. So what did I say we should do, number one? Thank you very much. I love you guys. So the first thing to plan is to have a budget. Or oh, sorry, a target. A target. Correct me if I'm saying something you don't understand. Which one is budget in what we are talking about. Just say, ma, it's you. It's not a budget, it's target. You must have a target. So for Christmas, this is the best season. I hope you know. How many of you do product? Only five? Uh -huh, more hands. So this is the best season for us. And if you want to make, if you're making clothes and you want to make 10, you want to sell 10 dresses, you better have a plan in place how to quickly get those 10 dresses ready. It's not that when the customer comes, you'll not be falling in their hands. It will affect your target, your bottom line that you have set for yourself. It would affect it. So evaluate and plan everything. Don't leave everything. Don't leave anything to chance. Be strategic. Be intentional about your every move. That's part of scaling. Also, find the money. I said, you, I'm sure you really say it's no money. It is part of it, but it's not the only thing you need. So you must find the money. My husband once said to me, he said, Mobo, tell your bank to give you a line. I said, I don't need it. Which nonsense line? They will not give me how many percent. I don't need it. Oh, God forbid. Do, 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 do. And then I was raised by, <laughs> is this shrewd or prudent? I don't even know what to call my mother. That. Hey. Magbo wo bank yo. Hmm. They say, hmm. Don't do it. It will ruin you. I said, ah. Then when people tell me today, I was at a meeting. They called us to speak to some foreign whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, these people shall. And they were, and I said, ah, that I don't have any loan. That I've been able to grow my business without taking any loan from a bank. And still right now, I'm not indebted to any bank. And the lady that said to me that, but that's not a, a good way to scale. <laughs> yes, it's not a good way to scale. You can say that, too, but you know you can have other sources of income. In Nigeria especially, with the high interest rate, how will I pay how many percent? Do you know how I, you must understand your business. Remember that. That's part of evaluation and planning. You must understand your business. The way my business works, I know how I operate. I know how I place my orders. I know how I pay deposits for how many months. Then I know when my products are ready and I know when I pay my balance and I know how long it takes for my shipping. You know? So if I go and loan money from the bank, guess what? I'll be paying interest even before the goods arrive. And then I'm working for the bank. So I always tell people that start small, finish big. So because you start small does not mean you will remain small or does not mean you should remain small. 
Make sure you start small, but finish big. Start small, test it with the little you have. When you have tested it and you think, ah, this is viable, this thing is sweet, uh -huh. then you can say, ah, sister, can you borrow me some money? A friend of mine did a property. She did not get any loan from the bank. Guess what she did? She borrowed money from all of us. She borrowed five million from me. She said, I'll give you six million. Is that not better? For a period of, if she calculates how much she will pay if she went to our bankers. <laughs> By the time the tenants pay, she will not have anything to her name. Yeah. Hey, what do they call it? Native intelligence. Is that what it is? Uh -huh. So I said, I've been able to do it without the loan from the bank. Right now, I don't mind investors to come. But like I said, I need more than money. In fact, money is not my problem. Let me brag. Because my God owns a cattle upon a thousand hills. So whatever I need, it will supply. It will supply. And if it does not supply it, he does not want me to have it. Shut up. You must get to that point. So if you are coming with money, you can't entice me with money. Because I know the God who I serve. But I need more from you, even if you have to come into my business. What are you bringing? Technical know-how? What expertise are you bringing in? I need more than that. So don't just think about money and get into trouble. I know someone that did, a fashion person like me. And she collected the money. Oh, I'll start a garment factory. I'll buy machines from this place. I will do that. Uh, plus the machine. Oh. Plus the money that she collected. Oh. But plus the business she's been building herself. Oh. Like now, everything is nowhere to be found. So you must understand your business. Loans are good. You can take it if you need it. But know exactly what you need it for. Know how long it will take to yield. Don't take a loan that you can't. In Nigeria, I say to people, and I can boldly say it, if you can't quickly turn it around, don't take it. If are you are taking loan to say, um, um, what would you use? Uh, what's financial people? You want to speculate with banks' money. Uh, God forbid, we will not suffer in Jesus' name. So find the money. Where can you find the money? Can you start by finding the money amongst people you know? Family, friends, friends, friend, somebody that you don't even know, but somebody that you know knows that somebody that has free funds to play around with. And some people will loan you without interest. Be smart. So find the money. And it will, there will come a time where you will need to go to the bank. You can go. There will come a time where you need to do all these grants. The things they do, grants, you go and apply a Lumelu grant. Um, I think they have one at LBS. All those, go for it. You never know. Go for it. Do it. So get secured, um, find the money. And then know where, for me now is, time. thank you. For me now, I have to know where my profit places are. So the second thing is my profit places. Where are you going to get the money? Where, where is the money going to come back to you from? So I have how many shops, but then I'm looking for more. So my shop is a profit place, but there are more profit places. Which other profit places do you think? You can expand your business to. And then you invest in technology. I'm rounding up because my time is far spent. You invest in technology. You know, we said you have to put processes in place to scale up. How do you keep your customer? How do you, how do you keep your customer details, for example? How do you keep your stock? So I'm talking because I'm a fashion retailer. So I talk in terms of retailing. How do you keep your stock? What, what um, software do you use to, to keep your stock, for example? Your customer, your, your, your staff, how do you pay them? What processes have you put in place for that? 
the things you don't know how to do in your business and you want to scale up, get the people that can do it. But I must confess to you that the major problem in this country is staffing. But guess what? It's not a problem. You can see it as something you have to conquer. So what do you do? Look for people and train them. So get people. So someone says, don't employ skills. Employ attitude. So if you have people that are willing to work and they have the right attitude, you can train them. If you have the skills and you don't have the attitude, they will kill your business because they say, I know, I know, I know. Iran, you, they don't know. Or the things they know, they need to know more, but they're not willing to learn. So get people, train them, and then that's part of what you need to do. That's number what? Staff is another one. It's different from technology. So I've talked about staff, staffing. How many did I, how many steps did I give you? Five. Number one, and planning. Number two, find the money. Number three, sorry? Number four, Num number five, thank you very much. So if you have all those in place, so you see fund is part of it, but you need to have all those steps in place to scale up. And don't see your business as a small business. And again, I will close by saying to you that there's yet more for us to achieve. And I'm saying that to myself. We are more than enough. And there are new territories we can take. But we need to believe God. And we need to ask God to give us the land. So don't be weary, no matter where you are at this moment. Don't be discouraged. Know that there is yet more. And for him to say to us there is yet more, he will give us what? All that we need. He will give us all that we need because he's our source. And don't forget, like Professor Nueno, um, Nueno Pedro said, be humble, be respectful, and think of your business as global. When you think global, people always think the America and the abroad and the London. Ghana is global. Tanzania is global. Zimbabwe is global. Gabon is global. Once you leave your shores, it's global. Go to Abuja, you are global. So don't be fooled by some big, 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 big words. Just know that there is expansion. Just know that there is growth. Just know that you are increasing. Just know that you are expanding. You guys have said it yourself. It's about expansion, about increase, about growth, about getting to the next level. So whatever you are doing right now, as long as you can move it to the next level, you have scaled up. And when you get to that point, you scale up. So it not say the path of the righteous is bright. It says it's brighter and brighter. So you keep going a step at a time, a step at a time, a step at a time. It is not a sprint. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we please celebrate <laughs> Pastor Mrs. Omobo Ali, Mobo Irene Biobaku, thank you so much for sharing from your heart. Like you said, you weren't just going to give us textbook solutions. You shared from your personal experiences, global impact by God's grace. So think, uh, you're not even yet ready to think global. So think, think, thank you very much. Be humble, be respectful, very powerful, powerful, simple yet powerful. Thank you very much, ma'am. We move on to our next speaker. She is, uh, I'll go very quickly because we want to have the panel session. Our next speaker is a graduate of the University of Ibadan, where she studied. She, had, she obtained a Bachelor of Science in Economics. She has had a very successful career in the Nigerian banking sector, spanning over 25 years, where she currently sits as the head of commercial banking for a reputable global bank. 
She's an honorable honorary member of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, Women in Business, WIMBIS, Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce, to name a few. She enjoys creating a greater public awareness and understanding of positive family values, financial management, and female empowerment in her free time. She has been happily married for 22 years and is blessed with three loving children. Daughters of Destiny, can we please make very welcome Mrs. Yetunde Oni. Good afternoon. So good afternoon. I'm very excited to be here before you today. First, I'd like to thank Apostle Osola for this opportunity to come and speak to you. I think um, she mentioned two, three things before when she first came in here, which um, the first speaker, which we're not privy to, had talked about. She talked about insurance. She talked about, um, I wrote it down, insurance and a succession plan. Then Mobile also came up here, and I think she's actually already given my presentation. So I think I should just go home. There's really nothing much to say because she's talked a lot about um, um, funding in different aspects. Now, I'm coming to give you a financial perspective to it. I'm not a financial expert, so please forget that. You know, the word of God says that he qualifies the called. He doesn't call the qualified. I'm not qualified as a financial expert. It's by the grace of God that I stand before you or that I was even called by Pastor Apostle. I don't know why she called me, actually, but I was very honored and excited um, when she told me that she wants me to speak here. So I'll be talking about scaling up your business in Nigeria and the global economy. I can see your theme for the year is my year of global impact, and I've taken it. I'm saying, yes, this is my own year also of global impact. Yes, I'm in the 11th hour, we're in November, but it's still my year of global impact. And it's so it is for all of you in Jesus' name. I have a few slides here, but before I start, I think I want to first commend all entrepreneurs that are in this room. I've been working for over 25 years, 27 years, but I can see all these beautiful women here. I know it is hard work to be an entrepreneur in Nigeria. It is extremely harsh environment. And I know that despite it all, you guys are doing successful businesses. You're traders, you own supermarkets, you're, you're property, you're selling, you're making food, you're in the agri chain. I really bow my head for you. You know, I, I, you know I'm, it's, it's a challenge. And I admire you all, and I know that the God that has been with you will continue to guide you and lead you on. So I'm, I have a few slides, as I said. We say we want to go global. And so it's important you know what is happening in the global economy. As she rightly said, global is anywhere. You know, Ghana is global. Angola is global. So within Africa, is global. But I thought that it was important to give you some context or I say a background. So I just have six slides. I'll rush through it. As I mentioned, Mobo has said a number of the things that I wanted to talk about in terms of getting ready to get that funding. So I'm going to be more on, my own is more on the financial aspect as in how to get that funding. And I know that all of you will say here that banks don't give money. Yes, they don't give money for different reasons. But you remember what Mobo said? It's good to start small and finish big. It's good not to take too much debt at your beginning. A number of my clients that I, I deal with that have made um, sizable businesses, they started very small and they did not take loans. So and that's why I said I'm not standing my, here as a capacity or my capacity as a banker. I'm talking from experience. I'm going to mix experience with facts. So I, I have some theory, but I'm going to talk, tell you about the facts of, based on the experiences that I've seen and have been shared with me by a lot of companies that we have in Nigeria. Um, Fortunately, or I would like to say unfortunately, they're mainly Asian companies in the manufacturing space. Hardly will you find Nigerians that are doing manufacturing in Nigeria. And they've been extremely, and I want to use that word, extremely successful in Nigeria. Why have they been successful? They've come in, they started small. They came in, first, second generation are working in Nigeria, and they started their business from their fathers. Most of them started as traders. They came in with little things, selling small things. And over the years, they moved from selling those things to manufacturing those things in Nigeria. 
and now they're big conglomerates and their private wealth and all that is from Nigeria. And then they go outside. So they start, this is their base. It's not that they brought money from abroad. So we that want to go global, also think of that. You can also get your wealth from Nigeria and also expand outside. So the overview of the global, as I said, just six slides. Overview of the global economy. The growth of the global economy, I'm sure all of you watch news. Please don't say that because you're doing business in Nigeria and you want to go global, you're not listening to the news. CNN, it's important. Listen to news. Listen to channels 10, 10 o'clock news. Just get information. Information is key. So we can know what is happening in the global economy. The growth of the global economy remains very weak. Manufacturing activities have weakened substantially to levels not seen since the financial crisis in 20. 2008-2009. There's rising trade tension between China and US, all thanks to our dear Trump, and geographical tensions have increased uncertainty about the future of the global trading system and international cooperation, taking a toll on business confidence, investment decisions, and global trade. There's rising debt and may take, make it difficult for emerging markets such as ours. Nigeria is characterized as an, an emerging um, economy and developing economies to respond to adverse developments and to face growth enhancing invest investment. That said, the outlook remains quite precarious. So the global economy is weak. There are a lot of, if you turn on your TV, what you hear there is just a lot of negativity. However, we're still standing. What of the Nigerian economy? Nigeria remains largely an import dependent country. However, there have been a lot of efforts to conserve this foreign exchange by the central bank and the federal government. And so what has been happening? You see that there's a ban of about 45 items over the last few years. And why are they banning those items? Because they want Nigerians to start to produce those items and to protect the infant industries like yours, to, see, to make sure that you are able to sell your products. Now, what has happened recently? or what is happening, sorry. We see that the rate of population is actually faster than the rate of growth of the economy. That is a problem. So we look at China and say that they have some restriction in terms of how many of children they can have, but we are just giving back. We're having so many children and the, the economy is not growing. We're coming from a recession. So in the last two, three years, there's been a recession in Nigeria and high inflation, growth in the economy really muted. I think the last, in the last quarter, uh, growth was about 1.84%. So the economy is not yet growing as it should be, but the population is growing faster than it is, and that creates a major problem. Our inflation rate is about 11%. Unemployment rate is about 23.1%. Then you have underemployment rate at 20%. That means people, unemployment is that you don't have a job. Underemployment are people that are doing jobs that are below their capacity is at 20%. We have 191 million people. Entrepreneurs, that means you have a number, of, you have a market, you have demand. You have 190 million people. We have over 40 million SMEs in Nigeria. And SMEs, all of you in this room, you contribute to the Nigeria economy by over 45%. So you play a major, major role in the country. It's been said overly that SMEs are the growth of the, they're the drivers of any economy, any economy. And in Nigeria, it's the same thing. 90% of new jobs worldwide are created by small businesses and nearly 3.3 million jobs every month in emerging markets are required by 2030 to absorb the growing workforce. As I mentioned earlier, unemployment, underemployment, population, just remember those numbers. So you have a large demand for your goods, whatever, you know. Creating opportunities in SME emerging markets is a key way to advance economic development and reduce poverty. However, we are saddled with a lot of constraints. It's difficult in Nigeria. What are the major factors inhabiting the growth of SMEs? If I ask you now, please, what would you say is the key thing that's inhabiting your growth? Government policies, yes. 
electricity power, yes. Sorry? Staffing, yes. Inflation. Transportation, yes. And these are all things that you need to be able to grow your business. If you don't have all this, these are basics in a developed country. They are basics. But in Nigeria, it's a challenge and it is required. And I'm happy nobody said um, funding. That means you're all fully funded. You don't need money. I'm happy to hear that. And Mobo had talked about that. So you don't need money. <laughs> According to the CBN governor, Mr. Um, Godwin Emefele, the SMS sector currently has an estimated financing gap of in excess of 48 trillion naira. That's the gap in terms of the funding that is required to bring up the SMEs to the level that they can really attain. That is the gap. But what are the challenges that, are, that face SMEs? The one big thing that I see in banking that, we come to, that is repeated is the fact that a lot of us are unable to bring a bankable proposal to the table. So we all want this funding. We say we want funding. So in one breath, I can tell you that it's good not to have, take debt from day one. And I, I strongly believe in that. Because you have to have your skin in the game. You need to grow your business from the small. So you can't just wake up one day and say, oh, I want to, I want to, um, I want to build a warehouse and produce 20 million X amount of products. Remember Mobile said that when she was looking for a small space. It's wise to start small. Because then you have control and you're able to grow your business. But we realize that there are not good proposals. There's no business plan. Remember one, the number one thing she said was evaluate and plan your business. We have not evaluated our businesses. We've not looked at the pros and cons. We've not even, we can't even, when we come sometimes, I see some people give me proposals. I don't even know what the request is. What exactly do you want? What do you want to use the money for? Is it for a specific asset? You want to buy a bus? You want to buy a car to be able to do your transportation? Is it that you want to buy an inverter? Is it that you need working capital? That is the money or cash that you need for your daily operations? Is it that you need money for packaging? What exactly do you want in that proposal? And guess what? You don't have to know it all as owners of businesses. You can hire people to write a good proposal for you. There's so many young very intelligent guys out there that can put together a proposal for you and that would be able to be presented to the banks. Do you know what your cash flow is? When I say cash flow, some people will look at me. I remember a friend of mine. We went to, you, um, to school together when QC. And she has this success. She's a dressmaker. And she's doing very well. And she came to me one day and said, Listen, look, um, I'm struggling. I, need a, I, need, um, um, I want to take a loan. I said, what for? Said she wants to grow. I said, grow what? Okay, can you tell me how much you have, how many dresses, for example, that you make in a month? How money do you generate? How much do you generate in a month? And I said about. I said no, it's not about. You have to be more specific. What exact? How many do you produce? So as he, as he said, pure, even pure water. How many bags of or sachets of water do you sell on a daily basis or a monthly basis? She couldn't say it. So I said, well, you know what? She said, you know, I don't know all this financing, financing. I said, it's not all financing, financing. You need to know. Because if you don't know, you cannot go to a bank. Because it's not your face that I'm going to use to give you a loan. These are depositors' funds. You see, people always say banks don't give money. It's depositors' funds. You come to you, we are taking from an excess and giving to, a, um, from surplus rather, and giving to a deficit sector. So we're saying that people are saving. And it's your savings that I'm using and giving to another person. So it's from A to B. If, I do not, if you come to say you want your deposit and I can't give you, you won't be happy. So I'm saying to her, I said, okay, so what do you know about? She said, no, I don't know. I said, okay, you know what? Just draw a line. Every day, put the amount of people, uh, what you have sold, and the income. Start to track it. You're already forming your PL. You're looking at your expenses, and you're looking at your income. I said, that's it. And then get a, an accountant that will come every month to look at it. And then document every sale. So have a receipt book. So you're documenting it. So by the time you're going to a bank, you know how much that you have sold. Because a lot of banks, we ask and say that we want three years audited financials. Some people, we don't even have auditors. And so it makes it difficult for you to be able to provide a bankable product. BOI, Bank of Industry, they do a lot of what they call capacity building. 
LBS also does a lot of that. Because there are so many grants, so many grants that are available out there for women especially. But people are not taking it because they have not been able to present a bankable proposal that would be acceptable and will allow them to have this access. Please visit those web BOI website or CBN and look for women grants. You'll see a number of grants there that are available and then requirements which have to be met. But it goes back to our evaluation and planning. Have you evaluated, have you planned your business? Do you know what your profit and your loss is? SMEs are small, they're dis diversified, they have financial, fina fi weak financial structures. So a lot of us, we are the beginning and the end, we are the alpha and the omega of our business. It is good when you're small, yes. But as you grow, you need to have a structure around it. Because if you're coming to a bank, I can't give you money for your dream. I need to understand the structure. I need to be able to see through. Okay, so this month you're going to make this. Okay, this is your treasurer. This is your accountant. This is your salesperson. Not everything in one. It's difficult for us to give you a loan like that. So you have different parts of your journey. So there's a journey. There's an entrepreneurial journey. So some of you have just started. Some of you have experienced. You have chains of businesses. Some of you are in the mature stage. Some of you are in growing. Some of you are thinking going in international. I mentioned the population of Nigeria for a purpose. We are 190 million people. Guess what? Most of the successful companies in Nigeria are finding difficult to even meet the demand in Nigeria. So because they cannot even meet, the, they have not yet met the demand in Nigeria. It's difficult for them to expand because they say, look, before I even finish producing, they are taking this product. How can I start thinking of going out? But they start thinking of going out because of the foreign exchange that is there. So it's a good idea. It's a good strategy to say, okay, I want this for export, for local, for domestic, and I want for exports. So yes, think of the global economy. But when you're thinking of the global economy, as I'm, I'm talking about under challenges, um, okay, let me just go through, finish my presentation before I start. So if you're looking at the local challenges, before a product can go global, it has to have quality. If you go into shops abroad, if you pick up an item, it's branded. I remember I was talking to Apostle about Bliss. I'm going to use her product. It's branded. I see Bliss anytime. I remember her because I knew her my, a long time ago when she used to sell. Um, um, she had this, yeah, exactly. It's branded. So you pick it up, you're attracted to it. It's good packaging. It's not just a cellophane bag. People would, are very discerning nowadays. So if you, are, if you say that you want your product to go to meet international standards, then it has to have quality. If you don't have the quality, then it's difficult to sell. Then of course, the almighty lack of collateral. But central bank has done something about that. There's what they call the, um, is it the collateral manage, um, so, sorry, I'm trying to remember. The, it's called the collateral What's it called now? Sorry. Something collateral management registry, whereby you can you can borrow against your movable assets, jewelry, cars. So there's a registry that you go on online, depending on the bank, different banks have it, every local banks, and then you can borrow against that. There's also Agua. Agua. I'm sure you've heard about Agua. Have you heard about Agua? Okay, this is Africa Growth Opportunity Act, which was um, done by the U.S. government. And it's to promote local production and to empower women like you and I and women. But there are requirements. Everything has requirements. 30 minutes is not for me, enough for me to start talking about all the products. I'm just going to just touch on them. So there are minimum requires that includes branding, packaging, I've talked about that. And of course, regulatory permits. So you have to be ready. Um, you have to get the certifications. The Nigerian Export Promotion Council also does a lot of hands-on training on how to access the export market in addition to providing required resources on various markets. So Nigerian Export Promotion Council, I've mentioned BOI, I've said CBN also, C Central Bank website, you'll see a number of um, opportunities for you that you can convert. How do we bridge this gap? So as I said, the central bank has provided intervention funds. There's something called the Creative Industry Financing Initiative also. It is targeted at various businesses such as yours. And they encourage lending and also to achieve 
the job creation agenda of the government. Because the, these SMEs, as I said, are the engine of growth of the economy. Then, of course, we have the non-bank financial institutions. So because we're saying that banks have failed you, some people say that, oh, banks, I go to a bank, they are not ready to give me funds. They ask me for my leg and my arm. They are saying that I should bring my dead mother's certificate. They are saying all sorts of things. Oh, I can't, the bank, I... But you know what? Just check yourselves. Check the business presentation or proposal that you have brought. Does it meet your, even your own standard? Can you, can you talk through it? Sometimes people bring proposals, they can't even talk through it. You're asking questions. Okay, so where would... Okay, so how do you want to... Or how are you going to deliver to your... Um, uh, uh, products to, to how do you going to sell? Uh, by the grace of God, I will sell. I agree there's the grace of God. There's what the grace of God will do. But it's also what you as an individual have to do. How are you going to sell your products? There's no point having a fantastic brand and not meeting your customers or the retailers. How? So people cannot talk about that. So it's important that now we have non, what we call non-financial institutions like a Lendigo. What does a Lendigo do? It was, what they do, it was previously called invoice pad. What they do is that they look at you, if you have a POS. I don't, how many of you use POS here for your businesses? Good. Please start using POS. Cash is not good. You know, the central bank is trying to promote a cashless society. And cash is risky. Cash costs money. Cash can disappear. But when you are, tra you are using technology to promote your business, it's a totally different thing. So what does Lendigo, I'm just using it as an example. I don't want for Lendigo. I've not done, used it, but I understand that. What they do is that they, if you have POS, and they will look at your transactions over a period of time, and they're able to finance you based on that. Just looking at your POS. So this is not a bank telling you to go and bring A, B, C, D. They're looking at your volume of transactions, which have to flow with the POS. Some people do invoice discounting. Some of us are distributors or suppliers to multinational companies like a Unilever, a Guinness, they do a lot of financing for their distributors and their suppliers. Because guess what? When you are successful, they are successful. So they support you. If you have an invoice from a multinational company, it's easy for you to get funding. You can take that invoice and get it discounted. You can take that invoice even to the and find out from the multinationals themselves. And they will refer you to the banks that support the distributors and the suppliers to ensure that you are able to be funded. And you get good pricing. I'm sure you're all aware of what's happening in banks now where the central bank has um, decreed that your loan deposit ratio must be 65%. And what has, has happened? There's a price war going on now. And banks are offering competitive pricing to borrowers like you. So you need to go out there and ask your bankers, what is available for me? But don't start with a debt. I always believe that you should grow. It's a top point where you want to expand, or maybe you get a big order and you cannot meet it. Then you go to, the, to them. You have family and friends, which you also mentioned. You'll be amazed about how you can break down 10 million into five people. People that trust you, but that's because you have credibility. If you don't have credibility, then nobody's going to give you money. So have you built up that credibility to be able to access this funding or to be able to scale up your business. And why do you want to scale up? You have not been able to manage the small shop that you are holding. What have you done to ensure that you can replicate and have consistent products or services in each and every one of your locations, just like a mobile? So she has four locations, and I'm sure the way you go into every other, each shop, you can you are guaranteed of the same service. Some people expand and say, oh, I just want to scale up, I want to scale up, I want to increase my business. They increase and they do not, they cannot control it, they cannot manage it, and then it fails. So what is your capacity? Are you using the channels that are available to you? Do you even know the channels that are available to you? Because a, no, a number of us, we are, we, I, think, I think sometimes we are lazy with information around us. We don't want to read or, or I don't, it's just news. But that news will impact your business, to impact your target market. What are your customers doing at that time? You do not know. The only way you can know is if you get yourself involved and understand the news around you. I mentioned the national, yes, what I was going to call it was the, 
five minutes. Okay. The National Collateral Registry to ease lending to SMEs. That's the one I mentioned earlier where I said that you have to register your movable items and you can actually borrow against those things. So what am I saying in summary? It is possible for you to scale up your business, but you need to be ready. You need to know your product. You need to have a product that is able to meet international standards when you're going out. A branded, a brand, what is your brand? What are you selling? How are you selling it? And then when you want to access funds, what, you need to be clear and specific on what you need those funds for. Attend building um, sessions where they build your capacity as entrepreneurs. So we're all doing successful businesses, but it could be better. It could be better structured, it could be better managed, and it could give us much, much more than we're having now if we're just able to do some certain things around it. I'll leave you with this, um, this um, Bible verse, which I really love. It's in Proverbs twenty-two twenty-nine. 29. It said, Seeth thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. So if you are diligent in what you're doing, if you are diligent in whatever task or whatever business that you're doing, be it small, if you go bigger, be it big, if you can go bigger, you just have to remain diligent and be focused on it. And more importantly, is to know what you're doing and to get yourself ready if you are, for where you're going to need that funding by ensuring you have good rec record keeping, you know your, your products, you know the services you want, you know your target market, and you think through how you can deliver your products and services to the bigger community. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Can you please celebrate one more time, Mrs. Yetunde Oni? We've heard from a practical perspective with an entrepreneur t telling us some of the tips with regards to upscaling our businesses, and then also from a financial expert speaking to us in terms of funding, areas we can explore funding, and the things that banks are potentially looking for or that would help proposals when it comes to obtaining a loan when we get to that point in our businesses when it, for us to obtain a loan. Now, I know that with your presentations, right from the very beginning when Apostle Busola came to speak, some people might have questions. There are a few things that are burning in your mind and perhaps you want a particular attention to something that's in your heart. And so we thought it was important for us to have a panel session, a panel discussion, and this will be very interactive. We will have back on stage our speakers and we'll just go through questions from the audience for the next few minutes. For about 10, 15 minutes, we'll just take some questions from the audience and give people an opportunity. Um, I am glad because they're not speaking to people who are not experienced. A number of us here are people with businesses, so we have real questions to ask. And I dare say that even if you have a question that was possibly not addressed during their speech, if it's something different, please, as long as it pertains to business, entrepreneurship, feel very free to ask those questions. So when you come forward, kindly tell us your name, and then if you have your business, this is an opportunity to market it a little. Tell us the name of your business, and then ask your question. All right, so I would like to welcome back on stage our speakers. Please make welcome the mother in the house, Apostle Busola Jegede, a business woman herself, a successful entrepreneur, many years of experience in running successful businesses, multiple businesses. Thank you very much, ma'am. I'd also like to welcome back on stage Mrs. Omobo Ale Biobaku of Mobo's Fashion. Please let's make her welcome. And of course, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Yetunde Oni, reputable banker with over 25 years experience in the sector. Like I mentioned, I would really, because of the brevity of time, I'd love to just go straight to the audience for questions. You've heard their presentation, you've heard them speak, you know the areas that you, perhaps you want to throw more light or there's a particular issue in your business that is, you know, that you want to direct an answer to or direct a question to, please. Is there anyone like that here? While we're waiting for somebody to respond, I picked something from um, Mrs. Oni when she was speaking about the population 
of Nigeria and how that should inform the opportunities we have for business. Now, something that 190 people cannot avoid is food. So, if you're looking for what to do, I, mean, I believe uh, there's a particular gentleman, maybe Mr. Dr. Ogunshino or something like that. He has said that there will be global mi millionaires from the agriculture sector. So, if you're looking for anything to do, I've done a lot of business. Well, not really a lot, but the kind of things I've done since I've started events, you know, I, I started from events when I couldn't work as a chartered accountant when I joined my husband. And that was the first thing, you know, I had a, a, an outfit renting out things for parties and then children's party entertainment, party packs, gift shop, you know, African bags, you know, all sorts of things that we do as women experimenting as we move through life. But out of all my businesses, the only one that I always run out, like you said, the demand is food. My beans would always run out. I don't know the number of bags I've bought. So please, if you're looking for something to do, go into that food chain. The value chain is very wide because 190 people, there is even an innovation now. I see bikes and they say 500 Naira food. I see the horse. Drivers are buying it. All sorts of people are buying it. So there's so, many, so much you can do within the food chain. It doesn't even have to be food packaging alone. Just pray that God should open your eyes. And so people are even delivering on, on timeliness. You know, that's what they are. They, they are tweaking it. Everybody is selling rice. Everybody is selling jollof rice. But can you deliver rice to somebody who, who is somewhere within a short time if the person gives you a call? So, I'm, I'm saying this to women now. Pray and fast. And God will give you something to do within that food chain. You will never go wrong as long as your quality is good. So, I picked that from the population as an opportunity for us in business. I think that's um, amazing because with, uh, and I'm sure Mrs. Oni would co corroborate with that. I work on radio, so we do the newspaper analysis every morning. And one of the things I would say based on the CBN governor's policy and the, um, the federal government's um, body, body language on agriculture is that the agriculturists are, are earning gold at the moment because of the closure of the border. And according to the CBN, they're going to close the border until January 2020, January 2020 and that's speculative. And the imp implication of this is how many of us still find frozen chicken and frozen turkey to buy? Is it difficult? So what is available for you to buy? Local chicken. So they are, the, agri the farmers are cleaning out. How many of us have seen um, rice, um, foreign rice to buy? What can you see? Local. The only thing I'm, 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 I'm sorry for is that they didn't give us enough time because a lot of people would have gone into agriculture. Because now what they are grappling with, pardon? Uh, what they are grappling with is trying to meet the demand. So now we now have rice with stones. They didn't even have enough time to refine their products because perhaps they didn't know there was going to be such a rainfall. So the policy of the government doesn't look like it's going to change. They are big on agriculture. So just to corroborate what Apostle Kisala mentioned that, even if you want to make agriculture, I'm looking for um, online agricultural, <laughs> agricultural platforms to even invest in. Because I know that, like she meant, and then there's a huge value chain. So beyond, if, if you don't want to make the food, cook the food, there's the actual farming of it. If you don't want to do that, there's packaging of it. Some people's business is packaging. Others is the transport side of it. So there's so many aspects. So even if you're doing one business, please consider that area. It's a big deal. The government is really focusing on that at the moment. Okay, so... Um, with that, so I hope we have budding, because I'm, I'm, me, I'm looking for ways to go into, if I had bags of rice, I'd be making a killing this Christmas. This, because Christmas is here, people are going to eat rice, they're going to eat chicken. They're going to, I had to buy old layer chicken recently, I can't remember the last time I bought it, because there wasn't any other one available. So you would get there to the market, and the only one that is available is those that are made by our farmers here. So they don't even have enough. You're even begging, just give me a new one. The, the guy was like, oh, this one is sold in for 4000 I said, give me, I'll buy it like that. So imagine the profits that people are making at the moment. And Christmas is coming. People must do Owambe. 
um, KFC, they must sell chicken. Um, chicken Republic must sell chicken. So you, you understand just the amount of money. Yeah, and, they're, and they're healthier. They're healthier. So just to, just to buttress that point, if you're thinking of an area to just quickly, you know, get into. All right, let's see. Do we have questions? Okay. Thank you very much. All right, so I'll ask, oh, right, this is two in one. These are two questions. First one is, how do you stand out? Create good relationship with your customers, especially if you do online business. This is wonderful. And so um, I, I, maybe just expand that e-business. So we've seen some people create a fortune on platforms like Instagram. It's a free platform, and people are positioning, just like what you mentioned, technology, positioning themselves and making a lot of money from there. How can you better position yourself? The next question is, how important is registering your business name or company before starting a business? So, very good question. Thank you. Um, it, it Maybe the technology space. Because you touched on technology, the relation. So, again, relationship. I would, in, engaging with customers online to ensure, you know, posting some of the... That's a whole session there, but just to touch on it. We've gone for a class <laughs> on that topic. But um, how do you stand out? Like Mrs. Oni rightly said, for me, I always say your product is very important. So whatever your product or your service is, make sure it is of high quality. Once that is done, then you can focus on the other ones. Social media platforms, not just Instagram, there are a lot of other platforms. There's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's even WhatsApp, Twitter, there's yeah, WhatsApp Twitter. Is a good one. There's Telegram. a whole lot. I don't even know Telegram. There's a whole lot. Like I said to Pastor Busola, um, Apostle Busola earlier on, he said I can go on Facebook. I said I don't even know what to do on Facebook. I never really was active on any social media except on Instagram, and probably because I really like pictures. So I love to just see people's life. <laughs> but to stand out, I said your product has to be high quality. Also, we always say customer service, the service you provide for your customer. But there is even yet more now. It's not only customer service. It's about customer experience. What are they experiencing with your product? What, how are you engaging them? What, do you, what, what are you doing to ensure that they come back to you? So it's not something that I would say you can just achieve with one, two, three, four, five, six, and pow, do it. No. You have to start. It's a gradual process. If you are not there, if you are not, if you are not on any social media, for example, get on one. You don't even have to be on all the social media platforms. You have to start. Can you start with one? If you want to start with Facebook, use Facebook and leverage the benefit of Facebook to the optimum level. Then you can now decide to add Instagram because you can actually open all the social media platform and they're not doing anything for you. It's not yielding anything. I read, who sent me a message and said to me that, oh, I read it somewhere that someone made 15 million in a day or something on Instagram. And I thought, even me, say, if more boys have not made 15 million. So it got me thinking that, ah, oh, what are you doing? I mean, you, you're not doing something right. You need to um, up your game. We need to up our game. So that's the way you can. Your product, number one, the, the, your customer experience. And when I say customer experience, I'm not saying that you have to, you know, social media, different things happen there. And we are Christians. There's some things you will not do. So you must know your boundaries. I don't know why I'm saying this. You must have a boundary. There's some things that you will never see me do. I'm sorry. Just because I want to sell business. Because mm -mm. I want to sell shoe and bag. And I'll be doing, yes, I can even dance. But I won't even dance if you name me like. I can dance to God, I can shout like the boy. You know, just know your limits. Be guided. Really, be guided. Because some people will do anything just because they want to get noticed. They want to sell. 
And after I sell, what else? What is on? There is no need. Be guided. Make sure your product is of high quality. That is very, very key. I tell people today that when I started my business, it was my product that attracted people. And what did I start with on Aula World Road? I did my windows. There's no way you would drive on Aula Road when I started my business that you won't turn. Because people were not into stuff, stuff dis with, um, visual merchandise. They were not into the display of their windows. But my windows, oh my God, I would dress it up as if they want to take the next step for that party. So you would drive, you would turn, and you would step in. And I attracted people just by doing that. So you must be innovative. You must be creative. What can you do differently? I always say to myself, what can I do to stand out as a sort of I don't want to be like the next person. I never wanted to be like the next door beside me. No. Let me be the standard that they look to. What is Mobos doing? What is she doing? Why is she... Well, why, why, how come she's able to do all this? So you have to think, read, ask questions. You know, read, research, and pray. God will give us witty invention. What is it that you can do that they will say, uh-uh, who is that? Everybody sells clothes, so don't get it wrong. You are not the only one selling beans. Everybody, they are selling beans. People are selling gari. But how is your gari different? Somebody did gari, and she did gari, sugar, and granite in a pack. Who do you mean? He has targeted the masses. They drink gari when they are tired. People, they drink bread and seven up. Can you think of packaging drink and bread together or turning that bread into like a burger, a cara burger with a drink that is affordable? We have to start thinking. So I'm saying that now. I have to go back and start thinking, Lord, me too, me too, more boss, fashion. What can I do to stand out, to be different? And we will drop that idea. But you have to research we keep researching, keep researching, and keep doing that which you are doing. Make sure you are, get, you are getting better, you are improving on whatever you are doing. I started as a multi-brand. Now we have our own brand. So we keep going. It's like going, you know, we have to keep ascending, you know? Hope I answered the question. Let me, yeah, yes. let me just add one. Too. Absolutely. Thank you. In addition much. to what Mobo has said, I think it's important um, that you are reliable. So as just as they, um, the, those social platforms can make you a success, it can also make you a failure. So if you are not reliable and you are not consistent in what you are doing, what will go around? There's something they call client reviews. Word of mouth and client reviews. So someone says, ah, don't visit that website. You know, we we're very quick to talk as Nigerians. Oh, don't visit that website. Or don't buy that person's product because she's not reliable or he's not reliable. So I would say re reliability and consistency would make you stand out. Thank you very much. Thank you. So don't promise what you can't deliver. Yeah. All right. The next question, the second one about registering your business name. How important is it? Um, I think it's important to register your business name. But as, we, as you know, a, no, a number of us start businesses from inside our houses. So you start small, but you have to register because at some point, as you are scaling up, since we are all focused on scaling up, if you want to scale up, you want to become bigger, you have to have a T number. In Lagos State, for example, you have to have a T number. That's tax um, identification number. So it's important you register your company if you want to. It depends on the vision you have for yourself, really. Right. But I think, it's, I think it's an important part of your business. All right, thank you. So thank you, um, if you don't register your business and you're meeting me here today, and you want to introduce your business to me, what are you going to say? Let's just be very simple. Oh, oh I do a business. I sell clothes. Oh, really? What brand? Is it clothes under the quetes? <laughs> no. No. When I started my business, even though I started from home, while I was in school, I registered a company. It's not, don't say, ah, it's expensive to register. I registered a company when I was in school. Guess the name of the company. In fact, I registered two. But the one I can remember, Vashti. Later, I now realize that, yeah, Esther. 
Vashti was dethroned because of pride. Quickly, I dethroned the business. So my business now would have been called Vashti Boutique. I said, hmm, power of name. They would have dethroned me long ago. So you have to register your business. It's very important because that is the name you will be called. They will call you by your name. And what is the name? Even Jesus Christ. God said to Mary, you will carry a child and you will be called Jesus, Emmanuel. You must have a name. So register it. It's not tough. It's not difficult. You don't have to go through a big lawyer. You can even go and find a way to do it yourself. I realize that sometimes if you go ahead to do your thing by yourself, you will pay less. But you have to be able to go through the trouble. There was a time I what's that thing with the passport? renewed my passport when I was a long time ago. Guess where I went to? I went myself to somewhere in Magodo to, re to, to renew my passport. I didn't use any other person. I paid 6,000 naira. Then my mates were paying 20,000 or so. I paid 6,000. But I went through the trouble. So sometimes you must be ready to go through the stress. But make sure you do it, whatever you do. It is so important. Not even now. If you were starting like how many years ago, I would say, hey, maybe you don't need to. Hey, hey, hey. Now, you have no excuse but to register your business. We, are all, we have grown beyond not registering our businesses. I'd just like to um, like finalize on that matter. It's, a, it, it's kind of a women's thing that women, some of us, we are lax in certain areas. You know, we don't like men to put us down. We say a lot of women, equality, gender equality, but there are certain things that I've noticed about women. Some of us are very spiritual, but we're not practical. Say, God gave me the name. God gave me, God gave you the name in the dream. <laughs> but you, <laughs> you didn't register it. Somebody else is using the name. They can sue you. You know, in, even in our ministry, we had an experience like that, a live experience, which I've shared with so many people. In the United, in Europe, we're not called Daughters of Destiny. We're called Busala Jegede International Ministries because a ministry in Europe, it's called, in London, it's called Daughters of Destiny. And, this, and people will watch, they will wait. If you're small, they won't come after you. But when you're big, they will come after you. And they were going to slam me with Let us pay attention to important things as women. Don't just say, mm, I'll be doing it. You do the right thing first. You cannot do the roofing of a house when you're supposed to be doing foundation. You do the foundation at the right time. And it is not only about registering your business. You've got to do every other corporate governance requirement. If you're, if you're baking bread and people, you're supplying people in the fellowship and they're buying your bread and you don't have enough that number, by the time people go on the road selling your bread, somebody will come after you. So let us look for the corporate, go the requirements by the law. And we must, you have to look for that money first. Some of us want to start first. You look for that money if you need to pause and do the right thing. So I don't know what you're doing. If you need, if you have a school, you have a crash. People are bringing their children to you. Favor, open the door. Favor may open the door, but you have to, it's not favor that will take you to uh, Ministry of Education. It is you that will plan it. Otherwise, people will come after you. And then you, a lot of people come to me to start solving problems that I feel like slapping them. You understand? Because they, they didn't do what they were supposed to do, but they want you, Pastor, pray, pray. Ah, because we do a lot of firefighting in this part of the world. And because we are spiritual people, you think you can go, my husband always says, let people know that pastor is not a magician. <laughs> Let people know that you, pastor, you're a human being. Otherwise, they will expect you. So when you start doing what you're not supposed to do, and the law comes after you, we believe we can run to a prophet. Give a seed. Yeah, mercy can speak if you really didn't know. Sometimes we get into trouble and mercy speaks. But that's why we're having a forum like this. Do what you need to do. Register your business. If you use a name that somebody else is using and you say that God gave you a dream and you keep on using it, they will come after you and they can sue you. 
So let's just do the right thing as, as children of God. Uh, wisdom is profitable for direction. Amazing. Thank you so much. That's so important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have no more questions? I believe that we've I believe that we've actually been able to take a lot in. We've touched on so many aspects of business. Very importantly, we've talked on funding. We've touched on technology, employing the use of technology in our business. We've talked about corporate governance, which we don't actually talk about a lot. Processes, registration, I mean, as simple as the NAFDAQ number. I don't know many of us who are into food, um, food business and actually have gone through the process of, you know, we say, oh, it's tiring. By the end of the day, we must obey the laws of the land, particularly if we're thinking globally. If we don't just want to end with selling to a friend, to people in your compound, we must begin to ensure that our businesses align with the laws of the land. So a big thank you to our panelists. But before, um, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to mention again something, you know, we're speaking to, to a lot of women. And many of us, um, we are plagued with mediocrity. Please, let us listen very well. An important part of your product is your packaging. No matter how good your product is, if your packaging is not good, it is the packaging that will attract people to even know the quality of what you have. So, I had, a, I had an experience recently. I just got four new NAFDAQ numbers. I told you about it. And I'm about to roll out my next product, which is beans flour. We've bought all the machinery and everything. But we're still on the packaging. We did the first one. And I went around all the supermarkets. And I th thought, if I put this packaging beside all these ones, and somebody walks into the supermarket, they will never be attracted to this. So sometimes, because you don't have a lot of money, you cut down on quality. There are some things you cannot cut down on. It is better you wait. If I introduce my beans uh, flour with the packaging, the first one I did, it's not going to do well. And if it doesn't do well, first impression, it matters a lot. How many people will you go and correct that impression with? My, my beans is doing very well because I spent over a million for the packaging. Because the kind of printing that I did they will do something, they call it drum. You pay for each color. And you do a minimum of 10,000 pieces. So I'm still using the one I did. because So some things, you really need funding for it. If you want to come to that space. A lot of people are selling beans. Some just put it in Ziploc. But that's not what I want. And that, Now, a lot of people are demanding for that beans. They want to put it in hampers. So you can see that there are some things you need to draw back. A Yoruba proverb says, when you see the ram moving back, okay, the ram will move back when it wants to fight, to gather strength. Sometimes you shouldn't rush out in a hurry. Sometimes you need to take your time. So that when you come out to that space, you would have, some people might have been there before you, but when you come out, you would be ahead of them. So, your product, the success of your product depends on your price, and the, the packaging, yes, we're in Nigeria, we, we need cheap things. Yes, we say that, but not for everything. She is into luxury. Abby, uh, it's not everybody that can afford her, but the people, she, not high luxury, but <laughs> I want to believe. <laughs> uh, some people can afford, but I want to believe you have a target market. So, please, let us also note that. Don't rush to bring out your thing, if you can wait a while. To get it right. When you get it right, you're going to make up for the time you wasted. So, my husband told me, let me come back. Because he traveled yesterday. Let me see. I said, let us go the route of the beans. For the beans flour. It's going to cost us more. But when we come out, I will not, I will not be withdrawing anything. When I come out, I know my, my packaging can stand in international quality. So, please, let us note that. You can start small, but there are some places you are going to. You take your time. You may need to get more money so that you get it right and you get it well. Do that thing very well. Let us shun mediocrity. A lot of people around us are mediocres. A lot of people you will employ, they are mediocres, number one. And people have 
poverty mentality. And you must insist on the quality you want. I see that a lot. People have this vision, and you employ these people, and they will bring down everything you have. So your supervision must be superb, and you must never, ever give an inch to anybody that wants to draw you down to where God has taken you from. Sometimes we are emotional about some things. You shouldn't, because if they spoil the quality of what you want to achieve, I fight a lot. I just went out to fight about the toilets when you saw me go out. Some of you don't. Yeah, we have to talk about these things. I went out. I go out during the service to check the toilet. Because if I'm here slain in my gown, <laughs> and, my ma- and somebody who is a first timer goes to the toilet and sees the toilet and wonders. So they are always on their case. During service, I go out to the toilet. Do we have toilet roll there? Is there air freshener there? If any toilet is not working, what's the plan? The cleaner must be stationed there. You have to watch it because this is where you are going. The minute you turn your back, some people you employ, they will do like this to you. Wahala is too They say your wahala is too much. No, it's not your wahala. You know where you're going. You know what God has shown you. So to carry people along sometimes is not only about motivating them. Sometimes you've got to be strong. So that like you said, they don't fall your hand. People are ready to tear down what you're building. So you have to be firm about it. Whatever you insist in your salon, if, you, if people walk in and your girls don't greet and you don't correct them, the impression that people get is what they take away. If you like, let your husband give you 10 million to do the salon. Are you the one that will do the hair for everybody? So please, let us note all this because I see a lot of women, they start good things, they cannot continue. They start it, they cannot pay the rent. And they come back to the pastor to pray. A lot is in your hand. Hard work, you yourself, you must be hard working. Every process of what you are doing, you must know it. So that when anybody leaves, sometimes, last December, I was the one sealing beans. Or which December was it? I was the one sealing my beans. Because my girls left. So please, let us all come off our high horses. If you want to succeed in life, if you want to succeed in business, you must be hardworking. Don't take mediocrity from people. Shun it and reject it. It is that standard you want that you insist on. And if anybody is not ready to comply, let them go. Let them go. And thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. I think it's in addition to what Apostle has said, it's, I think it's having the spirit of excellence. Having a spirit of excellence in anything and everything you do. So that everything that is associated with you and your business smacks of excellence. People see it and know that, oh, this is a product, this is a service that has been thought of and that they have an excellent standard. You'd be amazed at how that stands out for you when you go out and you need funding for your business. When you go out and you need to, and people, you, you attract the right people into your business. What I was going to talk about again was to talk, say something about funding. I'm saying funding, funding, because yes, I'm talking from the financial aspect, and I think it's important. People know that there are avenues and opportunities for them to access funds out there. I'm also, because it's a time for women, I don't know if you feel it, but there's a lot, a lot of grant intervention funds that are out there for women. But you need to package yourself well and be ready to meet the requirements. The requirements are not very stiff. But that it starts from how you're running your business on a day-to-day business. Because by the time you're running your business, then you'll get to a stage where you can now approach because you have the requirements that are required for you to be able to access these funds. And some of them are even a single digit. So don't think that it's only people that are, have business of millions and millions of nairas that can a- access it. You can access and can use it to d- grow your business. And then also, please also leverage family and friends. That's the first community you have. That's the first level of credibility that you can actually display. Because by the time you are meeting A and B and saying, okay, I only need 50,000, you are amazed about how you can get 50,000 for pe- four people. That's 200,000. So you are starting small. Even if it's a five million thing, break that five million into five people. One, one, one million. There are a lot of projects that are going on now 
And what a lot of people do now is to break down the items because it looks big when you look at it in, a, in, in whole. So it may be a billion naira, for example, or 100 million naira. By the time you break that 100 million and say, okay, for the windows, and I was thinking of that as um, Apostle was talking that, for the project that you have on, which by the grace of God, you guys are going to move in by the end of November, how are we going to fill that hall on? How are you going to put the windows, the chairs, everything? Let's break it down. Let's say the chairs are going to cost, have projections, have a plan around it. So the, the, the chairs, for example, I'm not sure what you've done, and I'm just speaking out of, you know, just my own experience. I'm saying ACs are going to cost X amount. Five of us will decide that we want to buy the ACs. We'll come together and we'll buy the ACs. The carpet is this. You we'll plan and you do that. What am I saying? For whatever dream or the vision that you have, break it down. Have a plan around it. Have a monthly, have a yearly, have a five-year plan. Where do you want to see your business in five years? How do you want to grow to five years? So you're not going to wake up today and grow your business by 100%. Guess what? If you wake up today and your business is at 10% and you decide to take it 100%, a lot of people fail. So it's not because God did not give you the grace. But there's some things that you have to do. There's a place for spirituality, I always say, and there's a place for things that you have to do. So after done all, stand, that's what the Bible says. After I've done all, not before you've done every, anything. So a number of things that we need to do. Planning is very, very critical. I can't, I can't emphasize this enough. It's important because it helps you to drive towards a vision. It helps you to know how you are going to achieve things on a monthly, on a daily, on a yearly basis. And then you'll be amazed when you get to that place that, oh, I planned for this and I got it. And you see your business growing in leaps and bounds. So you start with one product. Before you know it, you're going to two. You're going to three. You're going to four. But you, have, you start from something. And you start from a plan. So please always have a plan. And have the spirit of excellence yes. in anything that you do. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Can we please give a round of applause to our panel? Thank God. You're not clapping enough as if you appreciate what they have shared with us this afternoon. Thank you, Apostle Busola. Thank you, Mrs. Biobako. Thank you very much, Mrs. Oni. At Daughters of Destiny, we want every woman to know that help is always available. We are here to offer godly and practical counsel for various issues peculiar to you as a woman. Contact us today via our counseling hotlines 0708 307 6210 and 0909 328 8336. You will overcome. You are a daughter of destiny. Daughters of Destiny.